So this is my audio visual presentation for Fabian's Fitness. Firstly, I'll talk about the macro environment and one negative trend, time poor Australians. So time poor Australians, Australians are obviously busier and busier, high income earners are having less time, so they're high income, cash rich, but time poor. And unfortunately for Fabian's Fitness, their target market are the prime people that are time poor, so that's your executives, professionals, management, people that age from 35 to 50, these are the time poor Australians that I'm talking about. So he needs to, that is a negative trend. So time poorness means that that's a reduction in physical activity. People who are time poor are finding, they're doing, spending their limited free time, with family and friends rather than going out to gyms and exercising. Although this is a negative trend and it is a threat to the business, it can also be taken as an opportunity. We can open up Fabian's opening hours, so they can, as opposed to being a typical maybe seven to seven gym, you can be a 24 hour gym, which all opens up avenue stream, revenue streams from people like hospitality workers, from night shift workers, as well as the time poor Australians, who are, you know, because the hospitality workers, the night shift workers, would normally be able to go to the gym at certain times. Secondly, another, another trend, which is not really a negative or a positive, but it's an aging population. And they're saying reports by the ABS say by 2051, 26 to 28% of all of the population will be an aging population, which is 65 years or older. So a place like a gym would need to widen their target market to include, include these, this, this target market, this market, this market segment, and to, so to, to target these sort of people. Because if that's over a quarter of the population, you certainly don't want to be excluding those people. So, provide services to, uh, to provide that service for that for that aging population. Okay, so now I'll just talk about one of the strengths of Fabian's Fitness: the Hyper Yoga class. So it's new, it's innovative, and it's exclusive. So that's a key strength for it, and it's clearly getting positive feedback from all the people that are giving it a go. That makes the key strength of Fabian's Fitness. Uh, one of the weaknesses is the size of the facilities that Fabian's Fitness has. Uh, when It's pretty bad customer service when people are being asked to stop working out because a class is about to start. It's not something that you want to be telling your patrons uh, or your members, and that can spread bad word of mouth when those members go and tell other people about it. And there was also the issue with one of the, the Nailsworth facility that's got uh, the bad car parking. Uh, if people can't get car parking, they're less less likely to come to your establishment. So one of the opportunities for Fabian is his growing usage of social media. So social media is obviously booming uh, when it comes to promoting your business. So, um, so you can promote his business on all sorts of social media platforms. It's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, these are all pretty cost effective ways to to boost your business and promote your business, which is a good opportunity for Fabian. Uh, threat is the competition stealing, uh, not being willing to steal uh, ideas and concepts off their competitors. So if they do that and just say, for say they steal Fabian's whole new hyper yoga, then that would be a loss of exclusivity. And so it's just a threat to look out for. The Fabian just has to be aware that yeah, the competition isn't above stealing ideas. So the second question is just in regards to promotion and media advertising. I think that radio advertising would be a great idea for Fabian. A great radio has a good reach, which is obviously important, and a good frequency. Uh, it's, uh, you can have it early mornings on the drive to work when your target market is the executives, the management, professional people, they're generally going to work in the morning. Uh, when they're in their car, they're going to be listening to their radio. Although radio does have the negatives, it's, it's a in the background sort of medium. So you might not hear, you might not be paying attention rather than hearing. But I think it's a good way, it's a cost effective way as opposed to television in order to get uh, to get that maximum reach for your target market. Another, another advertising would be newspaper advertisements, newspaper promotions. So as Fabian did some research, he said 80% of people go to a gym within three kilometers of their 
of their dwellings, of their residents. Uh, you could put advertisements in local newspapers around in the areas of the gym studios. And it can be linked to radio. People read the paper in the morning and then they can get a second helping of the advertisement from the radio on their way to work. So it just doubles up on on, on them here, hearing about the, uh, the, the product. Okay, now let's go to the third question. So just we're changing the three four P's, the marketing mix and other things. So I think a key thing to do would be to change the class times, make sure that everything, not everything, but there's always a class at 7 a.m. Maybe we're finding that he was having to turn people away at 7 a.m. because the class were getting too full. But 7 a.m. classes were only offered three times, three times a week, I believe it was. So if you offer the 7 a.m. classes seven days a week, that would give a, everyone a chance to attend those classes because everyone obviously starts work at 9 o'clock, not everyone, but people start work at 9 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock might be their only time. They have other things to do in the afternoon, and evenings after work, family, friends, etc. So I think making sure there's plenty of 7 o'clock classes every single day uh, would be a great way to change the product uh, to improve the business. Uh, so obviously he's got the $2,000 marketing budget now and I've just touched on the radio newspaper advertising. That'd be a great way to get, get a bit of reach out there, sign up some new members. Uh, I'd be changing my strategy from target marketing to max marketing. Target marketing, although it's good for say a women's only gym, uh, it's not so much for uh, a gym for everybody. The key for marketing the keeper that sort of stuff is inclusion, not exclusion. So you're trying to include as many people as possible, trying to reach as many people as possible. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be targeting just the 35 to 50 year old business people, professionals, executives, etc. I'd be mass marketing to the to all, all market segments. As I touched on earlier, social media, making sure you're getting yourself out there in social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, these sort of Social media platforms are a great way to promote your business. So I'd be making sure to utilize those. And lastly, I'd be continuing to develop new strat new classes to stay innovative and exclusive. As I said earlier, the hyper yoga class, it's got plenty of plenty of exclusivity, getting great feedback, but unfortunately his competitors aren't above stealing these ideas. So as Fabian is a former triathlete, he's got a degree. So if he was able to continually evolve, innovate, continue to evolve new classes, he might be able to stay ahead of his competition. So there are just five ways I think that he can improve his business in regards to the four P's, the marketing mix and promotions. So that's just the end of my audio visual presentation. Thank you very much.